It seems a long time ago that I used to drive through Bishop's Court and watch this house going up, almost like on a cliff in Bishop's Court. Very, very smart, very smart suburb of Cape Town. Turns out it was one of the Legionet uh, people's houses going up. Legionet at the time was doing rather well, or so it seemed. Well, it was 11 years ago, and 11 years ago, Wendy Addison exposed senior executives Peter Gardner and Roddy Mitchell for defrauding Legionet out of six million rand each. She spoke to CNBC Africa about the reality of being a whistleblower and the importance of having a well-defined company and government policies to tackle corruption. Here's that chat. The convictions took seven years to happen. So within the seven years, I was unemployable because no recruitment agency was prepared to jeopardize their positions by putting me forward in a role as a treasurer, or even an accountant or a bookkeeper. So I began to live on welfare in the UK, uh, which, which is helpful, but it's, it's, it's tough. What types of legislation and policy do we need to have in order to ensure that it is made easier for whistleblowers to come forward? You want to consider whistleblowing as part of risk management, because if you're not going to take the steps to provide the internal policies for staff and employees to follow, then that employee, if they discover corruption or fraud or a, a wrongdoing within a company, is going to speak out to the media. And that's when your reputation is ruined. If South Africa or Africa's perception to corruption is a mindset, how do we go about changing that? Uh, we've got to be mindful that we have completely different customs uh, and traditions in, in Africa. And so it needs to be addressed in an African way. And whether that's through theatre, through singing, through uh, mobile phone networks, um, whatever resonates with the public of Africa and or South Africa and that is the way that we address this problem. When it comes to doing business on the continent, how much does corruption weigh when it comes to investors that are looking to do business with us? It's very, very important and, and a lot of the time that they access uh, um, reports from Transparency International or the OECD they'll go online and they will research and, and that's where they'll get prim primary information from. Um, they may also talk to various companies within the African content to, to find out the dynamics of the institutions they possibly want to invest in. Um, and again, it, it comes back to getting Africa up to speed with those legislations. Looking at corruption trends over the past 10 years, would you say there has been progress? My concern is that there's not. Um, and I have a big concern about the secrecy bill that, that's uh, being debated at the moment uh, because that will affect um, whistleblowers for government institutions particularly. Um, and one of the signs of a, of a healthy democracy is freedom of speech. Um, and once you in install something like a secrecy bill, uh, people begin to feel more and more disempowered uh, and less likely to speak out against corruption. Uh, and of course then we've got the ramifications of, of people taking their money out or simply not investing.